Recently, I did a video on how the mental health community came together to ah, get rid of some politically incorrect diagnoses, but here's one that has always just been very, very odd that has been out there. This is a story from back in 2015, as reported by the terrible, awful CBC. Yeah, they were still crap all the way back then, but desiring disability. What does it mean to be transabled? A oh boy, a oh boy. Imagine longing to live in a different body, a body less whole. It's a complicated and stigmatized disorder. See how they continue to just try to play the victim over and over again. One that researchers are working to understand. I don't think that I should have an arm. What are you, stupid? People who become fixated on these feelings, often from a young age, are called transabled. No, they're just called dumb, and they just need to be slapped upside the back of the head. Just stop it. Some of them want amputations. Others want to be paralyzed. Others want to lose their sense of sight or hearing. Well, you can accomplish all of that. Kurt Cobain seems to have this solution. In uh, For insight on the rare condition known as body integrity identity. No, it's called being fucking dumb. Just call that what it is. Shad speaks with two guests. Not Shad, no, he, he could probably help you cleave off. Oh no, different Shad, different Shad. Mark the Coomer, a man who lives with uh, stupidity since childhood and now uses a wheelchair. Dr. Michael First, a researcher who explores the psychology and social stigma of choosing disability. Just the need to have something unique about yourself just overweighs practicality and normality. Hilarious. So that's where we were back in the day. And you would have thought that that would have stayed relatively underground, but no, surprise. From transgender to transabled, people are choosing to identify as handicap. Yo, this is so wild. A troubling societal issue called transableism is attracting attention these days. See? See how they continue to shift the language? Global cooling, global warming, climate change, climate crisis, transabled, transableism. How adorable. Transableism is a newer term for BIID, body integrity identity disorder. Well, all bodies are integral, so that's just being very bigoted, in which a person actually identifies as handicapped. BIID has been re, uh, oh, relabeled as transableism to align with today's trans community, according to some Oh, great. Where are they going to put the wheelchair sticker on that stupid, goofy-looking-ass pride flag? The point of changing the identifier from the psychiatric condition, or condition to an advocacy term is to harness the stunning cultural power of gender ideology. So, you know, so uh, you guys probably know by this point in time, I'm a pretty big supporter of the Fresh and Fit podcast, and uh, Fresh likes to make a joke when he asks people to think about these and they lampoon the whole gender expression crap, justifiably so. And Fresh says that, okay, what if I identify as a lawnmower? Think about it. I'm a very, very, uh, I want to be a lawnmower. I can cut both length and girth. Now, apparently, by walking down this line of thought, that is just as valid as anything else. Yo, man, these people, way too far, way too far. Somebody should have just slapped these kids growing up. Okay, but yes, harness the power of some other cultural cancer to cause the allowing doctors to treat bid patients by amputating healthy limbs, snipping spinal cords, or destroying eyesight, according to evolutionary news. Evolution. Cool. Well, at least they're removing themselves from the gene pool. So I guess it's uh, evolution by subtraction and science today, which reports on and analyzes evolution, neuroscience, bioethics. What's ethical about this? Intelligent design and other science related issues. Culturally, transableism is the next abyss, the site also notes. So why? Because some people on these persons mutilate themselves. Yeah, yeah, we don't even need the ableism part of this stuff. All you need to do is just walk it back to the first part of that statement, transableism. All right. Others ask surgeons for an amputation for a transection of their yeah, spinal cord. Some ask for the amputation of uh, some skin and muscle, t or muscle tissue on their forearm or upper thighs. Um, the National Institute of Health notes on its website, those with bid desire the amputation of one or more healthy limbs or desire a paralysis. Why are you, why are you listening to these fucking head cases? This makes no sense. A North Carolina college student called transableism, called transableism a cry for attention. There we go. Somebody's making some sense. 24 year old told Fox Digital, 
It's offensive to people who actually say, oh my god, no it's not. I hate your framing now. You bring up a good point, but then you say, oh, to people who actually suffer from adults having full access to their body, it makes the mockery out of them. It's the same thing when dudes go into female sports. You're just blocking women. No, it's hilarious. You wanted all this stuff. I got to deal with the consequences, but to try to make your statement to appeal to emotions to say, well, what about the guy who's actually stuck in a wheelchair? What would Christopher Reeves think of this? Well, I don't know. He would just blow into his straw and go wherever it would take him. Well, let's read a statement in full. It's offensive to people who actually suffer from a condition that you say you need in order to be your true self. He went on, it's embarrassing. I don't know if you can be considered a serious human being if you alter your body like this. I agree. Let's just extrapolate that out further. How far does this rabbit hole go? Instead of getting the appropriate mental health you need. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. In one case, a bid, Jorkund Victoria Almi, 53, a senior credit analyst in Oslo, Norway. I couldn't think of a less fulfilling position, okay? You're obviously single. 53 year old woman who decided that my career will it will make me a full and complete individual and now she just works as a senior credit analyst okay cool so she she climbed the corporate ladder but then realized that oh my life is just not fulfilled so what did she decide to do identifies as disabled and uses a wheelchair even though she has no physical handicap because of course you need to be special i just have nothing else going on for me in my life so yeah i'll just you know roll around so that people take pity on me but then i can say no actually i can get that myself what do you think what are you some kind of a bigot and then somebody will go oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to because they're in norway after all i didn't mean to overstep my boundaries i was just trying to help you out like i would anybody else it's not just because you're in the wheelchair and then i don't know they'd run away from the the, the muslim horde that's just trying to bring culture to their country mashallah uh alm is also transgender of course because you cannot have enough attention points like come on man women even when they're 53 constantly need validation according to hearts or herald scotland okay so you got a scottish newspaper reporting on a 53 year old fucking wheelchair enthusiast from norway what are we doing Almi also said on a morning TV program, see what happens, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, you get all of the attention that you were looking for to begin with. Yo, good morning, Norway. She was on, okay, in 2022. That it had been a lifelong wish to have been born a woman paralyzed from the waist down. Same source noted. As even more shocking case, a 21-year-old North Carolina woman, it's always the women, it's always the women who identify as blind actually took steps to destroy her own eyesight thought i heard about this story way back in the yeah from a few years ago according to multiple reports from a few years ago i think i heard about the that one on o a they were laughing and making jokes at this head case like she was pouring sulfuric acid in her eyes or some dumb shit like that one Arizona internist, okay, called today's trans ableism a delusional disorder. No, I'm sure it is right now, but for the DSM-6, it'll be taken out of it. And go see that previous video I did on this stuff. In my opinion, both transgender and trans able pe uh, persons suffer from a delusional disorder. Jane Orient, too based for this world. A general internist in Tucson, Arizona, and executive director of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons told Fox News Digital via email. The oath of, Hippocra er, of Hippocrates adjourns physicians to do no harm, unless, of course, you know, the pay's good and you can get the proper sponsorships. Mutilating the body is an objective harm, even if it makes the patient subjectively feel better. The disability is lifelong and imposes burdens on others, and neither patients nor physicians can duck responsibility for that. Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, so far, so good, but lawsuits are coming for people who experience trans regret. Oh, you better believe that. Uh, the no other way to cope with a condition excuse is a cop-out. We need to find other ways. She also said deny her denial of reality is anti-scientific. No, shut up. We believe in the science. Dr. Mark Siegel, a clinical professor of medicine and practicing internist at NYU Langone Medical Center in New York City, as well as Fox News medical contributor, told Fox News Digital 
via email that most doctors will only perform procedures they feel are medically indicated. Well, of course, if they can get a sign off from some ideologically or possessed counselor or psychiatrist, it's like, yeah, you would live a, your quality of life would vastly improve if, if you didn't have your left arm. Trust me, I, I'm a specialist. Siegel referred to Munchausen syndrome, which is a fictitious disorder in which a person repeatedly and deliberately acts in as if they have a mental or physical illness. Yep. When they are not really sick. Yeah, of course, because you can get that initial rush of sympathy without having to go through with anything. Siegel continued, We deal with Munchausen and Munchausen by proxy where patients can be quite convincing about illnesses they don't really have. Yeah, I know. Like, I would be able to just scream my lungs out if it wasn't for the stage 4 lung cancer that I have. Please subscribe to my um, Patreon or I don't know what else. Calling cosmetic plastic surgery produces a gray area. Siegel noted that an internist who clears people for all kinds of surgery, I find myself in a lengthy discussion with patients about whether they really need a facelift, tummy tuck, etc. Oh, okay. He added about transableism. I would never clear anyone for a surgery to remove a limb that does not need removal. The North Carolina college student also said about today's trends of transableism, Today, I feel like merch people would even encourage mutilation for transabled people in order to be thought of as an ally. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I can see this, I can see this contentious debate right out there on the horizon. It's only going to get crazier. It's only going to get wilder. And this won't stop until somebody starts to uh, directly and pointedly address this nonsense. No, we aren't going to capitulate to your fucking nonsense. Just get your fucking head screwed on right for all the people that want to. We need to have a talk about mental illness. Yeah, sure, we're going to have that. Not in the way that, not like that. We, we don't like the way that you say it. Well, the fucking facts are the way that they are. Two plus two, it doesn't matter if I say that it's four or if it's fucking four. Doesn't change the facts. You're crazy if you think that your life would be better off if you were just hopping around and you had a fucking wooden leg, you idiot. I get you a better chance of dating Paul McCartney, though. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.